My home is in a village called Staxted's, Rottendale, Lanx. I trained as an apprentice plumber for seven years and was fully aware that national service was looming ahead. As soon as I completed my apprenticeship, I was born on the 25th of January, 1936. I was to have a medical examination in Manchester, where a pass was A1. I was deferred several times from 1954 to complete my exams, but I received a final deferment on the 25th of May 1957. I applied to join the RAF, but it would have to be three years, so it was the army for me. My posting was to Aldershot for two weeks, where I was kitted out in the necessary clothes and boots. It was two weeks to put you in the frame of mind that you were in the army, and you do what they tell you. This involved cleaning your web and polishing your boot till they shone. Up early in the morning, 6 a.m., polish the floors, light the stove, and have your kit laid out on the bed for inspection for 8 o'clock and drill on the parade ground later. The two weeks flew by and told that we were on the move. This was to Malvern to complete our basic training. After four weeks there was a passing out parade with a band of the Royal Engineers where our families were invited to attend. We all felt very proud as we marched round the parade ground to the music. I put in for a home posting after basic training thinking that it would be somewhere in England so that it would be quicker to get a 48-hour pass. But my name was down for Germany, and was told it was a home posting. In the army you go where you are told, so I was happy to venture overseas. Holding and drafting was the next move for twelve of us, and that meant sleeping and eating for two weeks. At 8 p.m., on a Saturday night, we were on the move to Harwich and set sail at midnight. The ship docked in the early hour of Sunday morning in Holland, where we disembarked for an English breakfast. In Holland, the trains had colours to identify what part of the country you will be going to, so names so you hope you were on the right train. The journey took up to eight hours, and eventually we ended up in Dusseldorf, West Germany. Quite a lot of regiments turned out on the parade ground the next morning, inspected, and we were pointed to a lorry and on the move again, up to our final destination. Later we arrived in Paderborn. Now we had a name, the 1st Field Squadron Royal Engineers. Saturday morning we were marched out into the large parade ground and allocated places for the remaining months in the army. I was told to report to the officers' quarters, shown a large bedroom with fitted carpets, eating and furniture, and a view from the windows. This would have been a German officer's room during the war, but it was mine now. The duties I had took about 30 minutes a day, and the rest of the day and night was my own. I was excused all camp duties, i.e. guards, fire picket. To fill in my days, I set up a cross-country team for the squadron, and trained also at the local stadium. I had the freedom to go anywhere day or night without signing in or out of the guard room, and no questions were asked. During the day I was in a track suit, at night I was in civilian clothes, 
The only time I wore a uniform was on NATO schemes. Over 500 ran in the cross-country race, and I came in third. The track you see was in Paderborn, and this was a medal I received. The schemes were great to be on. It was like camping, out in the open air. And the different regiments we were with, the rumble of the tanks, it was a new adventure. The food was good. I remember one day when about eight of us were in half-track and the tank rolled up and the tank commander came up out of the turret, saluted and said, he was to cross a well-groomed meadow with other tanks later in the day. Would we clear it of any mines? Inside the half-track, most of them were playing cards or eating apples, so we're not too keen on pretending to clear something that was not there. So later the commander came by, asked if it was clear to cross, and moved across a nice field, turning into a ploughed field. Now, if we were not playing at soldiers, then it would have been a different story. Another time, we went to Amlin. Everyone has heard of the Pied Piper, who appeared in Amlin in 1284, who claimed to be a rat catcher, and because of non-payment to move the rats, he took his revenge by taking a 130 children and disappearing into the mountainside, never to be seen again. Every year the official Pied Piper of Amlin, with many children, dressed as rats, play a part of reconstructing what happened in 1284. What amazed me was how the roofs of the houses leaned towards each other in the narrow streets, as though the foundations had been eaten away and caused the houses to lean. So back to the camp, which was on the top of a large hill. One night, on returning to my tent, I found that my bed had been removed. I looked, and higher up the field was my bed. I was not annoyed about it, but smiled, and picked out another tent with an iron bed, counted down the row to where I had to run to when I let the guy ropes down on the lads who moved my bed. Next morning it was not mentioned, but I never found that the grudges, backbiting, sly remarks, ganging up on other persons as such. On the 7th of July 1959, I was released from the army after two years and 17 days and put on an emergency reserve for three years where I could be called up within that period and later was on the army list for call up until I reached the age of 41. It was a good life and was pleased that I was called upon to do my duty. Yes, it made you see how the other man lived and give you confidence to approach life from another angle. It was a great experience and friends that are hard to find in civilian life.